so I was I've been running my clean tech for a couple of years now, and my my boss said, you know, we really should do a big sort of feature package on clean tech and where it's at. And um, it's an exciting time, but it's also pretty. It's it's, it's kind of there's, there's a lot of not so good news, I guess, just economically. And um, I guess I'm sort of trying to trying to focus on this question of what makes for a successful clean tech company. You know, all the VCs are out looking for the Google, the Google of clean tech and mm -hmm. Or the second solar after first solar, <laughs> so so, and uh, and I also wanted to convey some of the exciting technology that's under development. Mm -hmm. So that's why mm -hmm. I thought of, of you guys. So that's that's why we're that's why I I, uh, I grabbed your afternoon. Okay. So Ellie, I, I was now I remember I know you you left MIT, um, and I think you told me once that you actually decide to get back into solar mm -hmm. um, after 9/11. Can you just tell me about the, kind of the evolution of your thinking and Mm -hmm. And how I, how I ended up here? Yeah, well, I I got into solar in '76, uh, right. uh, uh, which you know there's a there was a pretty significant uh, U.S. effort in uh, photovoltaics actually, uh, a, a very good DOE program at that time, uh, and that was a consequence of the uh, of, of the uh, oil crisis, the, the '73 four, uh, uh, whatever the exact time frame was. And uh, so after my master's, I went to work uh, in the photovoltaic industry for a couple of years. And then I went back to MIT uh, to get a PhD, uh, develop a technology called string ribbon, which became the basis of, of, uh, of evergreen solar. Uh, <clears throat> but in the interim, uh, I was out of photovoltaics for about eight years because funding was completely oh, okay. impossible. So that was from 86 to 94 mm -hmm. during, that, during that period. Mm -hmm. So when I got back in, uh, helping uh, Evergreen get started uh, and helping them out as a consultant, but I hadn't uh, switched over uh, my MIT research to photovoltaics uh, until immediately after 9-11. Right. Uh, I was working on another topic, rapid prototyping. So, uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I first got into PV as a, uh, as a very idealistic young person uh, 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 wanting to work in, in uh, something with some inherent positive aspect to it. And then uh, what really got me back in full time was uh, some of the same, but also recognizing that, uh, uh, that, that there were now a lot of issues at play, in, including uh, uh, security issues, both energy and, and uh, other aspects of security issues. Uh, so it's really, uh, it, there's you, you can you can want to work in uh, renewable energy for any or all uh, or two of three reasons. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and those are uh, <coughs> climate change, uh, uh, energy security, uh, and and, uh, and and national security. Right. Okay. Then, um, so after making that decision back in two thousand one. You then start doing solar research, and that and that tech, that research is sort of the basis of what you're doing here. That's right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. now, could you run through? I know you've done it's more than one thing, but could you kind of just briefly describe well, some we, of them? Yeah, um, we have three technologies in different areas of, of uh, PV manufacturing, and uh, <clears throat> so I, I can talk uh, 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 quite a bit about uh, two of them, and then I'll have to leave the third to. Uh, uh, to, to hopefully a, a later discussion. Um, so the, the, the first one uh, is, uh, is, is in the packaging area. So the last step in making the PV module is uh, you take a, uh, a bunch of cells and you interconnect them and then you laminate them uh, in a module. So uh, uh, it's that interconnection step that, that we've developed the technology for. So. The interconnection uh, is done uh, using a ribbon uh, a conductor, a right. flat wire conductor, uh, which goes between cells, uh, from the top of one cell to the bottom of the next cell, top to bottom, top to bottom. Uh, but we actually have a module out there that, uh, that we can take a, take a, a quick look at. Um, and most of the light uh, uh, that hits those flat interconnection wires is reflected out the module right. and lost. So our first technology is called uh, Groove Driven, and it's licensed uh, to two uh, manufacturers and vendors of such interconnect driven uh, 
One is a company called Ulbrich, mm -hmm. and that's a U.S.-based company. Mm -hmm. And the other is a company called Schlenk in Germany. Mm -hmm. okay. And, and this, uh, what this ribbon does is it reflects the light rather than straight back out. It reflects it at a low angle, and then it gets trapped inside the module and hits the cell again. Right. Right. Uh, so that's the first technology. And then the, the second technology is in the area of cell making. Uh, so uh, when, you t when you look at, at the most common type of PV cell uh, on the market and the industry cost leader, it's a cell made on multicrystalline silicon uh, wafers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, pretty, pretty uniformly across vendors uh, or, or across the, the best of vendors, they run at about 15.5% efficiency. Right. So, uh, so our technology uh, is looking to get them to 19%. Uh, and that, in turn, uh, has several aspects to it, uh, including, uh, 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 well, t two of the technologies have to do with the front surface, and one has to do with the back surface. But it's all of this, of this new cell type. It's still a silicon cell? Yeah, but same wafers. Same, you buy the same wafers from the same vendors and you process it differently uh, so that you get a higher efficiency. Oh, more sort of a chemical treatment or, or is it? Uh, well, there are some chemical treatments involved, but, uh, but uh, what, what you do when you buy a, a, a wafer, uh, at that point you just have a, a, a thin slice of silicon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the first thing you have to do uh, is, is create a, a light trapping texture on the front mm -hmm. and then you make a PM junction uh, on the front uh, which is the basis of a solar cell, it's a big diode. You put an annual reflection coating on the front to trap the light, to help trap the light working with the texture. And then you put little fingers on the front to collect the current. And then you put a, a structure on the back also to collect the current. Hmm. Okay. So well, only if you do all that stuff do you have a cell. And your technology is? Is, is uh, uh, several of those steps in making making cells to uh, each each one of which uh, contributes uh, somewhat higher efficiency. Okay, so I guess it's sort of more of an incremental strategy. I mean, improving on what's there versus. Um, I mean, I don't want to down. Well, I'm, looking, I'm the, looking over here because um, that's uh, that that's that's kind of our uh, mindset. Okay, so so that's looking at a 30-year history of PV. And the vertical axis is module cost, mm -hmm. and the horizontal axis is uh, cumulative production. Right? It's, a, it's log, uh, pl plotted against the log scale. And uh, what you see is that module cost has been steadily declining uh, linearly on this, uh, on, on this uh, semi-log plot, mm -hmm. at, at, uh, uh, following a, 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 a a growth, a, a learning curve, rather, of about 20%. So every time cumulative production doubles, the cost comes down 20%. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and the point is that, you know, you go back to 1975 over there, right, in the red at the upper left of that thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you see all those little dots. Those are all chunks of technology, any one of which some might call an incremental improvement. But taken in aggregate lead to disruptive change. Right. And so if you look at where we are, which is down near where the red resumes, mm -hmm. okay, 2007 or a little past there now, um, and, and where we have to get to, which is to break through those green lines, which is equivalent price of coal, mm -hmm. So you, you need a factor of two. It used to be a factor of 100, and now we're down to a factor of two. Okay. All right. So a few more of those new technology pieces, which will play with many of the other ones, not all of them, but many of the other ones. It's not like they, they all get replaced by the new ones. Uh, it is what you need. Okay. Right. And that's the nature of this game. So, uh, so that that's how we think of it.